Recently, I made my first reaction to German satire artist Jan Boomerman. His brand of satire is on the edge, it pushes boundaries, and that I'm definitely a fan of. Now, on the previous video, I asked for recommendations for more of his work. As always, people gave me many recommendations, so thank you for those. And one of the most commonly requested pieces of work was actually alluded to on that previous video where he mentioned he had a lawsuit or a court case ongoing put against him by the Turkish president Erdogan. Now this piece of work is a poem he wrote for Erdogan and trying to learn about the context behind this poem, it seems that this was actually in relation to Erdogan getting upset about this song that was created by another German satire show called Extra Dry. The song here is Erdoi, Erdowo, Erdogan and it seems that after this was published, Erdogan got very upset and then Jan Boomerman made his poem. So I'm going to react to this song and also the poem itself afterwards. We'll react to this first just so I can get a better understanding of the origins of this story. You can tell me if I've got that context correct. Tell me more about the situation, what actually happened in Germany at the time. And let's watch this song first. Er lebt auf großem Fuß, der Boss vom Bosporus. Ein protziger Bau mit tausend Zimmern, errichtet ohne Baugenehmigung in einem Naturschutzgebiet. Well, is this place, what was that? A showy place with a thousand rooms, built without permit in a nature reserve? I need to find out about this. So it seems it's this, the presidential complex is the presidential residence of Turkey. So this is Erdogan's house. The building cost was double the initial estimate of more than 600 million USD. The presidential complex is home to the country's largest library with 5 million books. It seems very palatial. Seems like he thinks he's a king rather than a president. But the fact it has the biggest library, does that mean it's open to the public as well as being his residence? Bei Pressefreiheit kriegt er einen Hals, drum braucht er viele Schals. Bis vor dem Bus, bis mehr Schuhe. Ein Journalist, der was verfasst, dass Erdogan nicht passt, ist morgen schon im Knast. Yeah, that's a great point as well. I actually remember reading a stat that of the incarcerated journalists all over the world, a third of them actually are from or in Turkey. So it shows there's literally no press freedom, but not only that, the dissenters are actually locked up. Tell me how that's reported on in Germany. Redaktion wird dicht gemacht, er denkt nicht lange nach und fährt mit Tränen, Gas und Wasser, wer fahren durch die Nacht? Sei schön charmant, denn er hat dich in der Hand, Erdogi, Erdobo, Erdogan. <laughs> That's pretty catchy, nice little chorus there. Die Polizei in Istanbul hat eine Demonstration zum Weltfrauentag gewaltsam aufgelöst. Ist das Wahlergebnis schlecht? Das ruckelt er zurecht. That's another thing I've heard about before, like potential corruption in the voting system in Turkey as well. This is all these things that are mentioned. This is why I enjoy German satire so much because it just they just say facts, but they do it in these very humorous ways. I've seen different things like monologues, uh, different mechanisms for using satire. This time it's a parody song and it's still so effective. It's funny, but all the words they're saying are fact. I like to move it, move it. Kurden hasst er wie die Pest, die bombardiert er auch viel lieber als die Glaubensbrüder drüben beim IS. Gib ihm dein Geld, er baut dir ein Flüchtlingszelt. Erdogi, Erdobo, Erdogan. Sein Land ist reif für einen EU-Beitritt, er pfeift auf Demokratie. Tschü mit Ö sagt Erdogan. Und er reitet in den Sonnenuntergang. <laughs> I mean, we've got to talk about the music first of all. That was just an actually very well produced piece of music, very upbeat. Again, the contrast between the upbeatness, the quirkiness of the chorus, which I really enjoyed, and the grim 
reality of the words. It's very, another very intelligently produced piece of satire from Germany. This time Extra Dry. So tell me more about Extra Dry and their work. So this is what actually upset Erdogan. He obviously can't handle the truth. He obviously doesn't like the truth. What I find incredibly brave about this is I always find German satire to be very brave. They touch on these very uh, controversial subjects, but they do it very bravely. The brave thing about this is, especially in Germany, I know that there's a large diaspora, a large Turkish community within Germany. I'm sure some of them support Erdo Erdogan. How did they actually respond to this at that time? That's the bravery here, uh, especially touching on this subject, but especially because there is such a large Turkish community within uh, Germany. Tell me what you think about this. That was humorous, but straight to the point as always. Now, we're going to watch Jan Boomerman's response to Erdogan getting upset about that first video. This is Das Erdogan, Gedeit. So, can't wait to watch more from him. Tell me, tell me more about how this poem was actually responded to in the German media, in the Turkish media, uh, just everything that went on at that time. Let's watch it. Sack doof, feige und verklemmt, ist Erdogan der Präsident. Sein Gelöt stinkt schlimm nach Döner, selbst ein Schweinefurz riecht schöner. Er ist der Mann, der Mädchen schlägt und dabei Gummimasken trägt. Am liebsten mag er Ziegen ficken und Minderheiten unterdrücken. He likes effing goats. I seen someone mention that in the comments. It just uh, occurred to me. Already the words are so strong, so much stronger than the first one. It's almost like Erdogan poked the beast of German satire and Jan Boomerman just came in straight for the throat, going for the kill. And something that someone mentioned in the comments is this was actually created to show the difference in the freedom of the press, the freedom of speech between Germany and Turkey. We see the first video talking about how the press are so restricted, people are thrown in jail, media outlets are shut down, but Germany has so much more freedom, whether it's with the media or for free speech. And Jan Boomerman is using that. Not only is he using it, he's really going hard. Let's see what else he got to say. Koden treten, Christen hauen und dabei Kinderpornos schauen. Und selbst abends heißt statt schlafen, Felatio mit 100 Schafen. Ja, Erdogan. Felatio with 100 sheep, talking about CP. This is like one of the most striking pieces of satire I have ever seen. I've never seen someone go at another world leader, especially someone who is so volatile like Erdogan. Like people like Trump, I've seen a lot of comedians and satire artists go at, but it's never been so vociferous. Uh, this is a different level. Voll ganz ein Präsident mit kleinem Schwanz. Jeden, jeden. Wie gesagt, das ist eine Sache, da muss man, das darf man nicht das darf machen. Das man nicht machen. Ja, nicht Präsident sagen. Jeden Türken hört man flöten, die dumme Sau hat Schrumpelklöten. Von Ankara bis Istanbul weiß jeder, dieser Mann ist schwul, pervers, verlaust und so viel. Redschep, Fritzel, Priklopil. Fritzel is well. Sein Kopf so leer to Fritzel. wie seine Eier. Der Star auf jeder Gangbang feier, bis der Schwanz beim Pinkeln brennt. Das ist Recep Erdogan, der türkische Präsident. Wow, that was one minute of a verbal annihilation. I understand the whole concept of this to show that you can't attack people in Germany. They have this freedom of speech, they have this freedom of press. It's impossible to implement your own viewpoint, in this case Erdogan, or your own country's restriction of press to a, a free country. So I can see this is, I, this is extremely brave from Jan Boomerman especially taking on someone like Erdogan. I can see why people have told me they love Boomerman. This is, again, one of the most interesting, one of the most uh, unbelievable things I've ever seen from any satire outlet anywhere, but I understand it completely. I appreciate it. You can tell me how this was received in Germany at the time. 
Was it support? Was it like people against it? Tell me more about it. For me, I, it just makes me want to watch more from Jan Boomerman and yeah, recommend more from him as always. Thanks.